or YouTube. Okay. Hi, baby. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. I am Amber Carvely. I am the creator of Mortician in the Kitchen. I am joined today by Dennis, my lovely little, um, my furry little assistant. Um, Melissa, are you getting us going on like TikTok and all the things? I feel like you're on the Instagram here in just Instagram. a jiffy, and I'm going to have to get up and go get my little stand for my phone. <laughs> I think that's mine. Now that you're settled. All right. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> It's nice and rainy here. Nice. I'm gonna take a little uh we'll pause for a second. There we go. And just waiting for it to stream over on the YouTube. So there we go. <laughs> nice little video of me scratching my head. Um, okay. I don't know if it's recording our camera. I feel like I'm like such an old lady. I'm like, how does this work? All right. Episode two. Okay. So to reiterate, I'm Amber Carbley, the creator of Mortician in the Kitchen. Melissa, do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> no, yeah. I am <laughs> Melissa Meadow, the modern mortician. Um, and we are here to talk about greenwashing today. Okay. This is definitely going to be more of a, your area of expertise than mine. So uh, what do you, what aspect of greenwashing do you want to start with? Um, so the one that I get asked about most frequently is going to be the mushroom burial shroud. What mm -hmm. do you remember about the mushroom burial shroud? I remember it being, uh, like, I always, I thought it sounded really cool. Like, I thought it was basically like a shroud that had uh, mushrooms in it that basically helped decompose your body either better or faster or, like, more, like, more efficiently or allowed your body to be more nutritious for the earth. That's what I thought. All right. Um, so the person, Jaren Lee was the one that created it. Um, and my understanding based on, you know, the interviews and Ted talk and stuff, is that your cat? It is. <laughs> I was like, oh crap. Is that coming through? It's oh, him. He's, go. <laughs> he, uh, everybody really likes their food in this house. He's like eating the side of his bowl and it's clinking against the plate. That's <laughs> all nice. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Guess that answers if you can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> what was I saying? I'm oh, you were talking oh, about the yes. creator. So. Um, from all the, the research that I did, um, she did this in a terrarium in her kitchen and with like fingernail and skin clippings and that it, it worked that it grew the fungus, you know, based on the mushroom spores. But, uh, I ended up connecting with her at death salon in Houston. Were you at death salon Houston? I wasn't. Okay. You were in Seattle. Seattle and Boston. So this is 20 circa 2016 because I had just gotten Kermit that year and he was there. Um, and I was introduced to Jay room Lee because of my connection with Eloise Woods burial park in Austin, Texas, which wasn't very far from Houston where this death salon gathering was happening. And uh, I was like, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, I was asked if I could help them find a body to do testing with. And I was like, yeah, of course, you know, and I'll talk to the cemetery out there and get y'all connected as well. Um, I don't remember about how long it was, but I feel like it was within six months. We had the right family, the right timing. And um, uh, Jay Rimley brought the shroud down and I volunteered my time from beginning to end. And I'm a little, a recent article from National Geographic of all places came out with incorrect information saying that I was hired by uh, Koyo, which was not true. They never paid me anything. Um, I volunteered all of my time to that project uh, unpaid. And then I couldn't even share about it online. She got really upset whenever uh, one of the other volunteers shared a mushroom uh, shirt. Mm-hmm. 
Which I can understand if you're trying to keep that secret, that's fine. Um, but after the burial was done and the researcher from the University of Texas in Austin was giving the results back to Jay Rimley's company or her, mm -hmm. um, they weren't jiving with what was promised. So like we had a PVC pipe in the grave in the corner where they could run a camera down and they could take pictures and do soil samples to, you know, reinforce the claims that the mushroom spores would help grow something that would eat the toxins in the soil created by the body and make it. Yeah. Better. So none of that was happening. And eventually the researcher got a hold of me and was like, uh, the company's not responding to me after these results. They're not, they're not, you know, responding to my emails or whatever. Can you meet me at Starbucks and get these cat shrouds, which I'm looking at them right now in a Tupperware box. <laughs> Cat, like shroud, cat shrouds? Yeah, we were going to do test uh, burials on cats from the animal shelter, too. Oh. Um, so I still, I've given some of them away as like educational pieces because they smell like mushrooms, but mm. they don't look anything like the, what is it, the chic look? The yeah, yeah, yeah. Suit. Yeah, it's a natural color fabric um, that just smells infused with earthy stuff. I, I am certain that uh, there are people that would watch this or that follow us that would be in true, just like a mushroom, like a mushroom scented shroud for like their cat. But not for $2,500. Oh my God. Oh, those were the human ones. I don't know who oh, okay. was going to do that. So that company, they totally failed after um, all the exposure from Luke Perry's death. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they don't exist anymore, but they still get brought up a lot. Okay. Well, I feel like all of the promotion that they got from uh, an organization. Yeah, <laughs> from a certain organization. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, well, it's... Organization. It just sounds like such a good idea. I actually have, do you want, I am, so I'm growing mushrooms. I have one of those little mushroom log things. I feel like this would be, I feel like if there was ever an appropriate time to grab it and share it, just to see how beautiful it is. You can look at my <laughs> lovely uh, kitchen. Like, I really love mushrooms. I think that they're so astonishing and gorgeous. So it's such a, sorry, probably hearing a bunch of like, <sighs> on the table um because i you know when you look at this little log which i think i can take out of oh my gosh yeah it's so cool okay Ooh, it's very um well i guess i'm allowed to touch it because i have to be able to <sighs> like my apartment is just like a million different kinds of projects okay i promise this is worth the um while you're doing that i'm gonna go get the mushroom shroud too look at <gasps> oh okay so this is one of those grow your own mushroom kits and it's um it's actually it's so it's one big log but it broke um when it shipped but you know they're they write like oh if it um if it broke it's still viable um so i have a, a bigger piece and but it's so i mean like you just look at this and you're just like okay so these mushrooms are they're breaking all this down and they're i mean i guess i don't know anything about them making this better, but it's certainly delicious. Apparently these are shiitake mushrooms. So nice. I'm going to harvest these and eat something um, from them soon. And look at the one that looks like a butt. Look at that. <laughs> Which one? Wait. Turn it around. Okay, wait. Uh, this way? Uh-huh. There you oh. go. <laughs> you that? It looks like, uh, yeah, it definitely looks like something. A naked booty on a mushroom. Ooh, a little butt. Um, yeah. Yeah, put these back over on the stove, which is a perfect place for mushrooms. <laughs> okay. Um, so wait, so you the cat the cat shrouds, you have them within they're within reach. Yeah, hold up. I'm gonna get up. My office is my home. My home is my <sighs> office, so everything is close by. Oh well, there's this one too. Oh, there's this thing too. Dang, we should just do show and tell. 
I do feel like it is a show and tell. I have a, a question from another Melissa. Yeah. Um, she wants to know, was there no mycologist involved in the development of the mushroom suit? Um, she said she would think from the initial concept that they would have said it isn't possible to do because you can't grow mushrooms that aren't native. Right. Well, you would also think that that's the big takeaway right there is introducing non-native species of mushrooms, you know, into areas they weren't native to. And, and I'm mm. not a, a soil scientist or an ecologist or anything like that, but that is a big problem. Uh, um, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know why that didn't happen. There was enough money raised Mm -hmm. to pay attention to that rather than putting money, I guess I'm assuming into the design to make it look chic. Mm -hmm. Here is the cat one. Aww. It's just like a, yeah, just like a cat. normal. Um, it still smells like, it still smells like mushrooms. <laughs> the little spores. Yeah. Oh, so the do we know what, fabric, right? what mushrooms are in it? I don't know. She wouldn't tell me. And at the time when we did the burial, you know, I didn't know any better to ask those questions because right. I'm a pioneer. So <laughs> As Melissa says it didn't happen because of capitalism. Mm -hmm. Probably. I mean, yeah, it's, it sounds like a really like, honestly, I thought it was the most wonderful, beautiful idea. It was, I remember seeing you post about it not working and I was really, really bummed out. I was like, oh God, really? It just, you know, it feels, in my head, it feels like it makes sense. Yeah. I think she had a great idea and I think her heart was in the right place. But when you get people with the money involved that tell you how things should go, it doesn't become your baby anymore. Um, yeah. That could have been what happened. But the most disappointing part was a big creator in the death space uh <laughs> voldemort continued to promote <laughs> this product without proof um yeah. which was letting down their viewership and then it also yeah. discredits the work and the experience that i actually went through right firsthand well, and that's kind of what we were talking about yesterday is I think that there, I think that all of us as like influencers and content creators need to have a like, like reconcile like what we thought was working, you know, like, I think it's totally okay for all of us to be like, you know what, like, I thought the mushroom suit worked, I didn't have any reason to to not think it worked. And I we want to believe like, we want to believe and support. So if someone has an idea, like we want to support them, but then we also all have to be like responsible enough to be like, I guess we were wrong. Like, <laughs> I always think this is like a very like benign, I think, think is the way I want to say it. Like, um, example, like I used to not be into Miley Cyrus and I like on my Facebook, I'd be like, you know, when Facebook was the thing that we were using mostly and I'd be like, Oh, I hate Miley Cyrus. She's so annoying. And then like, I saw her do a, interview where she like came out as like she was like talking about her sexuality and being with women and being vegan and i was like oh wow like miley cyrus is really cool and my friend was like i thought you hated miley and i was like yeah i changed my mind yeah like <laughs> that's it yeah. like i was wrong and like it's but it's so weird that people people are just like but you said you didn't like her and it's like Mm -hmm. Well, now I do. Like it, it can be that simple. You can just be like, I like this person. I don't like this person. Here's why. I mean, hopefully it all goes into the positive ways because life is too short. Sorry, I keep adjusting my bra strap. I'm such an animal. I'm just like, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not used to that's how you bring in the viewers. <laughs> well, I know, yeah, the bra strap. Um, but yeah, I just think it can be a simple. I, I, I think we put so much pressure on saying that we were like wrong. It's like I'm wrong all the time. I'm wrong once a day i'm wrong about something um and then the next day you just go like yeah i guess i don't know we were wrong and and like give people a chance you know like i just wonder if if there had been more discussion about it not working would it have given her opportunity to fix it like i feel like right. maybe that's kind of what you were saying absolutely maybe more people would have stepped in because again now you've got the mycelium coffin thing same oh. question applies it's a big styrofoam looking casket or it looks like it looks like what you put your beers in to go you know 
That I understand what that looks like. Yes, now you're speaking my language. Yeah. So it's just like, where are funeral homes or families going to keep this? Where are you porting it in from? What about all of the the emissions and the cost and the the, the, the to create that to get it out there and then the grave is going to cave in so most of the normal cemeteries are going to be like no you have to have a vault right it's like why are we trying to capitalize more and more and more on the one thing we can't avoid right well, I wonder like what the solution there is. I mean, because it's like, is the answer like, oh, if we don't use grave liners, does stuff like that become more viable and better for the planet? Like, is it is it the grave liner? And if anybody is like watching and doesn't know what a grave liner is or like it's it's what. So when you go into the ground, it's not just the casket because the casket's going to break down. So you're also basically put into like a vault, a casket vault. Um, and this is so that when the soil starts compacting, it's not going to like go in like that it'll just like flatten out and basically it makes it easier to keep the cemetery. I mean, looking nice, which I do think is, you know, nice. I think the cemetery should be, you know, man manicured to some degree. I don't, I don't have any problem with it. I'll put it that way. <laughs> on the style, what you're looking for. Yeah. You're looking for a natural burial park and it's supposed to have, you know, some kind of movement. Right. Natural, but yeah, I get that people to each their own. But that's the biggest, um, right pill to swallow early in my career was I was just like so adamant people had to know the green options that I was like this is why this is not good but it really comes down to what is best for that person and their family and their next chapter the closing chapter of their right business. um so yes what some things are out there that are capable of doing are just I don't know. I think it just, ugh, where am I going with this? There's a lot of venture capitalists jumping into death care right now. And it scares the shit toodles out of me. <laughs> Can I change that enough? Yeah. 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 It's, it's uh, yeah. I, I feel like maybe, are you saying, um, well, I feel like I know what you're saying, but maybe I can add on to that, that it feels like right now. Cause this is like, this is such a like, hot topic kind of item, like thing to talk about still. And it's very buzzy. And like when I worked with, and I feel like I can say this, like when I worked with the order of the good death, we got, and I know that they do still, they get so many emails from, from everybody because everybody wants to talk about it. But like, I mean, you probably know this as well as I do that from talking to a lot of journalists is that like most people, like they just want something that's, um, it doesn't have to be, yeah, and, and it doesn't have to, we don't have to even say it's as gross as clickbait, but like they want stuff that sells. And I'm not mad at people that want to sell advertisements and make money and get paid because, hello, that's what we would like also. <laughs> so it's not like we're not trying to do the same thing, but but I think maybe um, it's like, well, we want to be careful of people just doing like outrageous, outlandish, almost like... Um, I was thinking like of like jackass style, but like death positive jackass where they're just like, look at this cool thing. And then people get excited and then they invest in it. And it's just like, you're taking away from what we're trying to do. The cause is very simple. We want people to feel better about death and dying. We want them to have options and we want them to have affordable options, not just like accessibility. Yeah. Ex accessibility. Yes, exactly. And not like a $3,500 burial suit. Yeah. Which is, yeah. <sighs> I feel you. I feel you. Um, what else do we want to talk about with greenwashing? I know that like, I, I felt like the green burial council should do, and maybe it's on the website and I haven't seen it, but like, I want them to do a better job talking about embalming fluid, the green embalming fluid. Cause I was really confused that I like, I thought that we could bury people in a green burial park if they had been like the green embalming. I know we talked about this yesterday with the uh, Enigma. What is it? It's an Enigma. It's an Enigma. I'm glad you brought that up because um, it's on my list of things to talk about in the greenwashing. So um, I did a little digging yesterday and since their ingredients are proprietary, it can't, it's not listed with OSHA. Mm -hmm. So that's why these burial parks can say no because they don't know what's in it. So like, for example, mm -hmm. There's a chemical or a natural chemical additive that can be added to, that is advertised that can be added to cremated remains to neutralize them, to make them um, 
safe for burying a plant. Okay. Um, so like these, some of these urn trees that are out there um, might have this proprietary product in the vessel. Um, <clears throat> what I've noticed with cremated remains, and I believe these people did too, which is why they created the product. When you add water to cremated remains that are made from fire, mm -hmm. it turns into like a concrete. So you've heard mm. these horror stories of funeral directors replacing cremated remains with concrete. <sighs> because it's very similar right and it acts the same it binds yeah um, so when you the tree urns that initially were sold and i'm using tree urn as a specific generalized term not intending to touch on anybody's you know branded name right, right. Um, an urn that is a tree uh when when those roots are young and they reach the cremated remains and those harden around them mm -hmm. kills the tree. Oh, it kills the plant. Right. Like it chokes you out. So they created this product that would neutralize it. Well, if we don't know what's in it, it can be a natural product. Just like we say, you know, embalming is made of natural stuff. Formaldehyde mm -hmm. is natural in apples in our own body. Mm -hmm. So I'm shaking the little. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Yeah. That's kind of where we're going with this. So this product, is it safe for us to hold it in our hands? Right. Would that be something we want to put into the earth? What is the long-term effect of this proprietary solution or this mixture that's going into the earth? Right. We don't have those answers because it's proprietary. They're just saying, just uh, they're just like, just trust us. It's fine. They're not trying to. Yeah, there, it feels like there should be... I mean, again, I know we were like kind of joking about it yesterday. Like, it's like, okay, guys, like not everybody's like, nobody's, nobody is looking for like the recipe to your secret sauce. Like they're not trying to rip you off, but maybe, you know. Well, in the chemical companies, absolutely. Right. They, that's, yeah, but there needs to be more uh, control or regulation of these green products that are out there and how much of an environmental impact they actually have. For example, a lot of people um, will talk about Passages International Mm -hmm. not being a very green company because they ship from overseas. This is a Passages International product. They were kind enough to send it to me. It's a little casket that I use for demonstration purposes to educate people on these choices. Uh, there are artisans all over the world that make these in your area. Um, they can't readily give up their stock to me to use for this stuff. Passages is a great opportunity you know, for people that need something quickly. Mm -hmm. um, there are also other alternatives too, but four passages they do work certified fair trade what does that mean to me i have to go by the science and the information that's put out by government entities or certified fair trade folks and things like that but i've sat in on some of their conferences before their team is really upfront about where they're getting their product and how they're getting it so i think it's great to be able to have this in mass in the United States to distribute to funeral homes for families. But if funeral homes aren't showing them to people, then. Right. And then well, there's past, yeah. Artisans oh. Collective, a death care artisans collective that's online where you've okay. got, you know, your local artisans that'll do this stuff too, which I think is important for people to know about. How are those, cause we use passages at, um, when I ran Undertaking LA, we, we use them. Um, and they were super nice. I re I loved working with them. They had really like great customer service, really, really like lovely people. Um, I was just thinking and like, you know, the problem of like sh having stuff shipped overseas. I, I wonder in, cause their base was out of New Mexico, right? So they were having things shipped to New Mexico. I wonder is if there's like a solution where they can start ordering from people in the US. Is there like a way, is that something that I, I feel like I talked to the owner once, but I don't remember now if he was, cause there was like somebody else that made sh shrouds and this isn't me like not saying her name to be coy. I, I gen Oh, now I remember her name. Now I'm not saying it to be coy. I remember she was a little um, miffed cause she felt like passages had like ripped off her shroud idea. Do you know who I'm talking about? Are they about? in California? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. They also made the same claims against uh, Eloise Woods. Yeah. I thought that was weird. I was like, I, I, I mean, like, I want to be sensitive here, but I don't 
can you rip off a shroud? <laughs> really, the supports all need to go in the same place. But however much yeah. research that company did into those people ripping them off, I don't know. Right. Um, I was really sad that, that they felt that that happened. And we but, she wrote yeah. us we got we got an email from her a really i did not enjoy that email like i was <laughs> i was yeah i was i was a little miffed by by that it was a very harsh email about uh us not doing our research and i was like look here i will say as a woman who has mm -hmm. been stolen from intellectually yeah. yeah and not handled it well <sighs> i do appreciate her reaction because I've been there. I've been the one having a bad reaction. You've seen my bad reactions. <laughs> We've all had them. It's fine. Trying to be. Hey fine. man, I, I take that Zoloft every day, every day now. Oh, 75. I'm at the lithium point. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. I will. PTSD is. <laughs> Uh, I just said uh, 75 milligrams of Zoloft makes me uh, realize I was like, oh, my God, is this how normal people I'm like, wait, wait. So your brain just normal people's brains just don't completely harp on the same thing over and over and over again, like a broken record telling you that you're a bad person and thinking about all you mean you just walk throughout the day completely unaffected by things. Right. Oh, my God. Yeah. I wonder everyone thought I was bonkers. Jeez. Um, so yeah, I, I hear you. I feel, I feel you and I empathize because I have, uh, you know, like the night that I finally <laughs> called out somebody, I definitely like, I had like, I had reached a breaking point. I had just, I had just, I was absolutely broken. I was so tired of, uh, you know, I was tired of seeing things that I had done or just being gassed or whatever. So it's, yeah, I, I under, I, I will also say that I empathize with her for, feeling that she needed to say that this was her idea or her shroud. Um, and I think that that's a good place for us to both be in as humans is like, you know, like if anybody, you know, to the people watching this is knowing that we're not here to just like, this isn't like us just talking poop on people. Oh, <laughs> yeah. She's talking to <laughs> Yeah. Taking this all off right now. Yeah. Yeah. Someone else getting that. Um, no, well, we were talking about my college uh, having another Melissa. I feel like I know this Melissa, Melissa Olden. Um, she was saying that we should have a mycologist, and then we got a thumbs up on the Zoloft. <laughs> so I tried to talk to one of the mycology people on TikTok, um, and I didn't like his answer because he, I don't think he was listening to me. So <laughs> I, I will try to find another mycologist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, ooh, we should invite them on. We should yeah. do a, a call for mycologists to call yeah. them, like promote it for next week. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, I think that would be cool. Like, I would love to talk to um, I would love to talk to all sorts of plant people because there's just so much to learn and know. And I know we can like look it up, but it's not as um, <clears throat> pardon me, it's not as fun as like having an actual real conversation. Yeah. Um. Have you, yes. uh, tell, tell the audience about the Capsuli Monday. What do you know about that? That gets shared a lot on social media and I want to talk about it. The Capsuli Monday? Yeah. The egg <gasps> thing. Oh, the egg. <sighs> yeah. Um, okay. Are you kidding one? Um, all, all I know about that is like, I feel like all I've ever seen are just like pictures of it, like a drawing of a person in a fetal position and it's always like the same picture just getting um re yeah reused it's like yeah like i don't know that it ex yes there we go that thing. yeah so yeah the first company was capsule monday the second company is the tree of life <sighs> okay I'm, so yeah what do you know I, about decomposing bodies uh <sighs> <laughs> I feel like I should know a lot more than I adjusted right there. Ah, uh, they decompose. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you, you release a lot of heat for for roots, right? Yeah. I can't. So this first of all, 
how am I going to lube up your grandma, fold her <laughs> into that? Uh, I'm looking for pictures in this book, and that's the only freaking picture. Um, but yeah, how am I going to lube her up and backwards slide her into this thing? Um, yeah, you then to... load it up in the back of a truck and take off down the highway with the tree flapping out the back. <sighs> you get it in the ground. By the time you put it that deep into the ground, that's not where all the good microbial action is. So the body's not going to break down properly to return to earth. Um, then a conversation I had last week was the amount of water that it takes to establish a tree. And what about gut bacteria? Right. Um, we also, someone wants to know if you bury someone like that, won't the tree fall over once the body is gone, if it grows at all? I don't know. Well, I, I mean, I don't think it would make it. And nobody has this actual video or science to prove it. It's all concept art. So nobody's done it at all. It's nobody's the got the science behind it. It's all claims. Hmm. Like, okay. For example, I'm going to throw this one company under the, they sent me a lovely, lovely pet shroud. Okay. And their thing is they create life from death. They want to encourage people to plant trees on top of shrouded bodies. Okay. So the shrouded idea, mm -hmm. this is great to get people to interact with the death of their pet. This Ooh. is a great idea. But That's we, gorgeous. Maybe a year after the burial, we plant a bush, a hydrangea or an ivy plant. Why does it have to be a tree? Why does everybody have to be a tree? Because we've all been told trees are good. We know trees are good, but so are pollinators for, for the honeybees. Bury your pet in one of these beautiful shrouds from this company named Transcend, or maybe from the company that this one right here, you've got the cocoon, the sweet goodbye. Um, they're all natural products. You know, do something participatory there and then plant a pollinator bush over the animal. These are great that they're making them, but I'm scared that if these trees fail, mm -hmm. everybody's going to, all the old school funeral directors are going to be like, we told you so. Yeah. And, and every, all of us out here that are advocating for this change and advocating for the right things, I'm going to get emotional. <clears throat> We're left holding the bag. Right. Well, okay. Um, let's talk about the, the tree and the shroud. Is this like bring the shroud bring your shrouded animal to a cemetery and we're going to take care of it and we're going to nurture the tree or are they like giving this to you? And then they're like saying like Mazel Tov, like have fun planting a tree somewhere with this, figure it out. Cause I kill everything that I plant. I have um, three cacti from Jill, uh, death doula LA. I haven't killed those, but I almost did. Yeah. And I have a dill plant and some mint. Um, so if you gave me my cat's body and a tree and said, here you go, pal, uh, plant it, it wouldn't make it. It would be dead. Yeah. These guys are lucky to be alive. <laughs> um, they've hung in there for a whole year. They're not getting any taller, but they're here. <sighs> um, so the way, and I'll say their name, Transcend. Matthew was inspired by the Capsule Line Monday. This is his story. He told me when he wanted to actually make it work, he was devastated when the, when he found out it didn't work. So he's trying to create forests where people can be buried and have a tree buried above them. They're not at that point yet. They're okay. building out. My concern though, that has something that was brought to me after I posted their, their, the unboxing of the pet shroud, which again mm -hmm. is a phenomenal product and offering uh, people are really concerned about the amount of water that it's going to take. And then the people that are involved behind the scenes are kind of names that you wouldn't want to be involved with. Mm. Trump. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It's almost hard to think which one of them might be worse. worse. Oh. It just, I understand money's got to come from somewhere, but yes. And then when you've got the Green Burial Council telling you why it's not going to work and trying to help you make it to where it could work and you ignore them, mm. like, I don't know. I don't know. But 
this is designed for pet fit parents to buy the product and do the burial on their own, on their own land. The, okay. So just like the product right. that exists from the Sweet Goodbye Cocoon, which I need to do an unboxing of this pretty soon. Uh, they, they were kind enough to send me some of theirs. Uh, they're really nice. Like, it looks really cool. Also, of course, again, it's all about me. Transcend pet product. Great products, and I think they can do great things. I think we need to think about the water involved in this stuff and right. be more ecological in the plant suggestions that we are putting forth with these projects. Not everybody can be a orphan tree. Right. Um, are they are so are they concerned that the water that it takes to uh, propagate and not that sword I want like to make a tree from your cat it, it, do they think it's going to take more water is that what they're worried about like more to get it settled in so or is it or is it just like are they saying like don't plant trees because like that just feels like counterintuitive to what we've been told all our life is like keep planting trees we're running out of trees so it takes a lot of water to establish a tree to get a tree root to establish um and I found this out the unfortunate way again I'm not a plant person but I very briefly owned a home before the first bubble burst uh, mm -hmm. in Lubbock, Texas. And I wanted to plant a tree in the front yard. And I talked to everybody at, at the nurseries, what's going to work in this area? You know, everything has to have so much water just to get them right. to root and establish. Even in an area out here where we get a lot of rain, you still have to tend to these new growths. And if they mm -hmm. die, that's the devastation that you're leaving that family. So it's imperative that you pay attention and put that effort into keeping these trees alive. And I hope, I hope it works and I hope that it's good, but mm -hmm. there's other companies out there that I'm really scared of that are, you know, capitalizing on the green movement and, and stuff like, where you can bury cremated remains, you know, on land at the base of a tree. And that's your tree. Mm -hmm. How is land protected though? Because right. the research I've found or have been told about and shared with me uh, is that there's no conservation easements on any of these deeds. Um, so they, they buy the property say for $70,000 and then they resell it to themselves for 1.5 million. So it looks like it's valued at 1.5 million. And the LLC that they sell it to would be like Melissa Conservation Park LLC. Right. So they put signs up out there that say Melissa Conservation. And the people think that land is really a conservation burial park. Right. But it isn't. It's not protected. If that company folds, what happens to the cremated remains that are buried at the base of these trees? If a right. logging company buys it up from them because they folded and they go and bulldoze everything. Oh yeah. Uh, so then is that an argument for using the cemeteries that we already have? Yeah. And robbing <laughs> them and taking care of them. Yeah. yeah. Why do we have to reinvent the wheel so much? I think this is where some of the old school funeral directors might agree with me. We yeah. have established land. We have established cemeteries that we can't do anything additional to because nobody's comfortable with the fact of making them dog parks or anything else right. productive like that. So let's create spaces where trees are planted or bushes are planted or memorial benches are put in, you know, outlining these sections. Or you put in a dog park for the community over here and this pillar was donated by Bob and Mary and Sue and Sean and you know, whoever, sorry, I just named a bunch of people I know <laughs> and I want to bury you in a dog park. <laughs> but Bob, man, Mary, and Sue. The name is good. Yeah. <sighs> hmm. So I'm just Look, taking, I'm, yeah, thinking for example, about that. What, what did, I know that Forest Lawn, was that mm -hmm. the one that did all the phenomenal different stuff? Uh, well, a uh, forest lawn was started by Robert. I always, I don't know why I always forget his first name, Robert Eaton. Um, but forest lawn basically invented the, like the combo package. They're, they're like the one-stop shop. So you can go, you can, you have your mortuary, you have like the chapels, you have, um, the flower shop, you have the cemetery, you have all of that together. That was like a, a really innovative idea. He's, 
well, I mean, obviously he's dead. Um, the Eatons are like old California money. Like they own, they own the state. <laughs> They're friends with, out with Mr. Waldrip from SCI now. They're yeah. Up, They're upstairs, big, big money. Downstairs talking about death care capitalism. Yeah. I mean, look, man, I, I like, uh, I love, I like forest lawn. It's really pretty. I, I have a One very, do they have it? Oh, that's Hollywood forever. Okay. They do the events. Um, Forest Lawn does events also. They're a bit stuffier, um, but they have like a really lovely museum. Um, they'll do small, small things. Hollywood Forever is the cemetery that does like, um, they host movies. Like I saw Garbage play there um, and it was amazing. And uh, I uh, got really high and then fell asleep at the beginning of Indiana Jones and then woke up at the end of Indiana Jones at Hollywood Forever. Um, everybody was drinking and, and or high and that's why I don't smoke because I was uh, completely missed out on the entire experience of being there but I think I did have a very good nap um, so yeah they're awesome I really like them I hope that they're really nice people I don't know if they are Yeah, but I think we should be able to do that with more of these city cemeteries yeah like what they're doing but so many people are just so adamant about leave it alone Right. Well, there's a cemetery in um sorry my eye itches in Long Beach that um they've been doing one of my friends, um, Ryan and Martin, who they just moved to Kentucky and the house that they bought has a cemetery in their backyard. So now somehow they yeah, they like yeah, I know. But they it's like Sunnyside Cemetery in Long Beach, California, and they started doing events that basically were like fundraisers to um, put money back into the cemetery and fix it up. And I thought that was really cool. And I, I think that there maybe was a little bit of pushback from like Long Beach, but it's a pretty like hip city. And I think that they, I, th I think the story is that they sort of came around and saw that like Ryan and Martin really like, they're just, they're such lovely people and that they really, really cared. And they, they wanted to just, you know, they reinvest in their home. So yeah. like they're coming back out actually, I'll be at, so they're not doing the events at the cemetery. Now they do them at, I think it's the Mexican American Museum of Art in Long Beach, but now they do like a halfway to Halloween Hootenanny. Um, and I think some of the funds go to support that cemetery, which is a, just a great way to support cemeteries and put money into revamping them and keeping them nice with, you know, well, uh, not having people trample all over the land. Um, I think we brought up Greenwood Cemetery yesterday. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Sandy and I visited Congressional Cemetery uh, when I was, you know, out there in Washington, D.C. with her last time uh, for the NFDA area stuff. Uh, they have different nonprofit programs where you can pay to walk your dog in the cemetery. Like, it's a dog mm -hmm. club. So you Aww. join the dog club and you can go in and access this beautiful cemetery and walk around all the historical stuff with your dog. Um, just different ideas there's things that can be done and i think if there's people out there that are looking for a way to get into death care the right way if you're out in a ruler community or there's a defunct cemetery in your area find out about it adopt it uh ed bixby does it why can't we and you know go find these cemeteries that have defunct nonprofits and turn them into something amazing Man, that's a, I wonder, so there's a, um, there's a nonprofit that is, they'll give you a lighthouse and you can just, you're, the deal is you have to like take the lighthouse and fix it up. No, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about Tillamook out here. Is it? No, I don't know. Cause they, they were talking about on stuff you should know. Like it's like lighthouses, like oh. there's, it is like, it's a thing where it's like, there are multiple lighthouses that are just falling apart. And they're just like, if you want to come live in this lighthouse and fix it up and make it better, you can have it, but you have to like you know, you have to keep it up and renovate it and it keeps them from falling apart. But uh, it would be cool if there was something like that for cemeteries. Like, I wonder if there's anybody that's watching or listening that wants to find all of those cemeteries for us, because I do not have that time. Um, but I would gladly accept the help. And then, you know, finding people that wanted to work with us or find ways to, right? Because everybody's just, everybody wants to find a way to make a difference. You know, like, I, I know that I think that's why people are attracted to this. And if we could find a way to help people, you know, like everybody's busy, everyone's got 
family, kids. I'm lucky that I have very few responsibilities other than a job, which allows me to spend so much time thinking about this. But I think if we could give other people a head start, that would be really wonderful. Yep. <laughs> All right, we're gonna put that intention out there. Somebody find, put together a list. Do you think it already exists? Do you Maybe somebody will send us the link. That would be amazing. It's probably in the archives of the findagrave.com website because they have everything. Yeah, they are really, how are they so on top of everything? Volunteers. Good Everybody God. sends in photos for free. Oh, they're amazing. Um, all right. In our last 15 minutes, because um, I do have a, uh, I'm watching Jurassic Park and The Meg today with Annabelle. It's a very important movie date. Um, what are what are our last? Oh well, can I talk about how I'm I'm angry about people? Um, <laughs> about I don't actually think that men are bad. So let me preface it with that. But I will say that the only people that have been trolling me have been boys. <laughs> Okay. Not not getting trolled by a lot of ladies, to tell you what. I might have interpersonal problems with them um, in, in the past at work, but they're very nice to me on the internet. So thank you, ladies, for finding <laughs> some sort of relaxation on my balls. Um, but man, boys are not cool. Um, so for anyone that, that uh, is watching this and doesn't know, I reposted a... Sorry, my cat just looked at me from the table and made the cutest face. Um I posted something on my Instagram that said, uh, in Norway, it's not an uncommon response to say, um, uh, up and not crying when people ask how you are. And let me first address that uh, not uncommon does not mean common. Holy shit. So many people were like, so common. And I was like, no, it does not. It just means it's it's not uncommon. It's like this. You have to be like, it's not uncommon. Maybe that makes more sense. Um, but like so many guys were just like, oh my God, if not crying is your standard for life, you're super weak or like what a baby or I don't, I didn't, I didn't bring them all up. I, this morning I was like, I'm going to look at, <laughs> bring them all up so I can read them or scroll them. Some guy today, some fucking, you know, I'm, I'm saying the F word there, some meathead whose profile picture is literally him doing this. He's like, okay. That's the dude that that razzes me about ah, bodies. I blocked him. That guy sucks. He does suck. You do not get to troll. First of all, you can do whatever you want. But you're a little wiener if you troll someone without your real name and you don't let them reply to you. What the shit? Because you know what? Amber Carvely, right there. Amber Carvely. That's my name. And I'm going to tell you what I think you can do with, I don't know, anything. I lost the uh, train of thought. I was going to say to go after yourself. That's that's where we're going. Um, and I'm going to put my name on it. I'm not going to be a little baby and hide behind a pseudonym. Oh. No, I have 100%, 95% uh, certainty I know who it is. Uh, but, you know, whatever. They have a lot what? of troll accounts. And okay. Too much time on their hands. Clearly. I mean, and look not mad at uh, people that have too much time on their hands to like trolling because I troll uh, <laughs> I troll anti-abortion and anti-LGBTQ people all the time. Right on. <laughs> I'll just um, be like, not cool, man. You suck. But I'm not a jerk. To give you insight on who it might be, uh, remember the person that showed up unannounced demanding a license at undertaking a lay from Texas? Oh, do I? Oh, yes. Wait, but do you, are they using fake pictures? They were a woman at one point. They used a woman's profile and friended me on Facebook and waited about three months before they started uh, really attacking me in, in my personal posts. And I was just like, hmm. Interesting. And I found out from another professional uh, influencer, educator, uh, female in the industry that specializes in embalming uh, that this person was also harassing her interesting i want to like i i want to i'm like can i just want to bring it up on my instagram it's so the person only has like four they only have four posts and it's like them at the gym it looks i mean i know it's like very easy to oh, i can't sign in on this um yeah well if that person's a fake i mean i always think that i always like to reiterate to people that i'm like you know there's two different um 
definitions for trolling. There's like a troll, like you're a bridge troll, but then there's also from like a fishing standpoint where like, you're just trolling. You're just like taking a wide net and you're just casting it out and trying to find everybody that you hate and just putting a bunch of stuff out there to see who bites. Um, and, uh, I just try to think like, oh yeah, this person it's, it's sometimes it's like not even personal. Like they're just sad people who probably ironically really need uh, to cry and need a hug. I would say that to a lot of guys that were like trolling me. I'd be like, oh, baby, you need to cry most of all. I hope that you get, I hope your mom hugs you. I hope you have someone in your life that loves you, which is always a sick burn when you say something back like that. Like, I hope someone loves you. <laughs> but anyways, I, uh, I, I think people, man, I think people need so much compassion right now. And I've just felt so... <laughs> <laughs> I was about to follow that up with, and I've been so angry. Um, I, I just like, I feel very protective of like, hey man, like people need to be able to cry. Like let people cry. That's why I feel like, I don't wanna like take this to like a super dark place, but I, I can't help but think that there's a connection between the horrific violence that is happening in our country and like just the uh, massive amount of like toxic masculinity where it's like we just don't let people cry or feel sad and i i feel so strongly that what we're doing aside from you know protecting people's rights for death is to protect their uh, or to give them permission to just be sad like it's you know it's okay like i think that that's why it's so nice that you and i just talk about like yeah, I've been a hot mess before. Who cares? You know, like, uh, I, yeah, I take Zoloft. So, <laughs> and like, does it make, yeah. Um, I just want, you know, and, and other people don't have to feel like they have to say it, but if us saying it makes it their life a little bit easier, like why wouldn't I just say I take fucking Zoloft? Who cares? Doesn't matter. <laughs> My life is so much better now because of it. I wish that someone had put me on it a long time ago. I probably would have been, I don't know. I, I would have. When you're not getting insurance, you know, when you yeah. don't have insurance and you're working a professional job, but you're not valued enough to be insured by your employer. It's really hard to take care of yourself. I've yeah. Been here. I know you've been there. We've got a lot of people that are going to listen to this that are in that situation. Yeah. I went to a lot of free clinics. I was at, I was at the free clinic a lot, sitting yeah. sitting in the waiting room. Yeah. And then we speak up and we try to make it better and the people with the power and the money come down on us even more. Like, Oh, yeah. That's how you know you're doing something right. Yeah. I keep telling myself that. <laughs> the lithium that, keeps telling me that. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I tell myself too. Um, whenever I think of lithium, I think of the little old, this lady in Sex in the City um when do you watch did you watch sex in the city i did but sporadically it wasn't a favorite i had to see it with friends it's houses. it's really disturbing now when i talk to girls that are like younger than me and they're like sex in the city is that that show with that like older late like that old late old lady and i'm like i'm sorry i think you mean <laughs> carrie bradshaw and she is not an old lady she's very young and hip and cool and in her 30s um no, but there's a scene where it's uh, raining in New York and she's having like this like sort of wonderful day. She's just adorable, like cute haircut. And she goes into, she escapes the rain and runs into a, a diner. And then she sits at a counter with this old lady and she's uh, putting lithium in her ice cream. And she's like, tears it open. And she's like, it's lithium. And she's like eating it. And I was like, yeah, that lady's awesome. Lithium. I, ice cream. I haven't. I haven't looked into the ways to abuse the resource. I'm just trying to make the resource yeah. make you feel normal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm de yeah, I'm definitely uh, not uh, advocating that. And I'm pretty no. sure it's probably a dig at mental illness. There's some problematic things in Sex in the City. They're just like, look at this lady. She has mental stability issues, but whatever. Uh, I wonder that if it would work for me better if I did eat it like that. I think that was the joke is that she like crushed up her lithium. Like she definitely, I think she was supposed to be on it, but she was like, you know, crushing it Having up. Having fun and... with the way she was going to take it. Yeah. Look, if you're going to be crazy, crazy. Like the uh, people that like to take their pills out of the gumball machines. It's like <sighs> you got to do, I... do it fun. Yeah. I think that that's uh, I dig that. Um, all right. So we'll, we've got seven minutes left. What are, are we angry? <laughs> How was I going to say? Are we angry about anything else? What else are we? What do we want to spend our last seven minutes angry about? 
or happy about. We, I mean, we could soil ourselves out of joy. I don't know, but I have to run to the bathroom. So <laughs> you entertain. I'll well, <laughs> you taking a, a bathroom break in the middle. Yeah, it's almost been an hour. I didn't think. I didn't think. <laughs> All right. Why don't we just, I'm just going to wrap this up then. Uh, Melissa has to um, go soil herself or not soil herself. Uh, <laughs> If you're going to do it, again. exactly. Um, I assume it's about the lithium, not going to the bathroom. So um, this has been episode two of I'm going to soil myself. I am Amber Carvely, mortician in the kitchen. And uh, the lady going to the bathroom is uh, Melissa Meadow from <laughs> the... <laughs> washing. All right. Hurry. <laughs> okay. I get all around the toys that I brought out. <laughs> Little maze over here. Okay. All right. I was wrapping up and I was saying our goodbyes to oh. you. Um, do you have anything that you want to promote? Follow us on Instagram. Um, make sure that you like and subscribe to the show where we get up and go to the restroom in the middle of it. I guess now I permit. I I can. I, I'm fine right now. But um, yeah. Like subscribe. Tell the algorithm that this is good. We have um. We have tw like 24 followers and um, someone else has 1.95 million, 195 million. I think we could get there. We only need 1.86 million more people to watch our show. So we're well, so Here's so the thing. We're going to have this uploaded on my YouTube. It'll link to your YouTube. Um, let's see what else. It'll be in podcast form at some point, right? It'll just be we could put this in a pod. I feel like it works better if you can see our faces. I mean, we could certainly take yeah. the audio off of it. So, yeah. No, also, let's make this yeah. one be the one you have to look at us. Yeah, I think people look should have us. to watch our faces. Look at us. Make sure that you say thank you to Melissa, uh, Melissa Olbin. And oh, yeah, is it Hedy or Heidi? H H Heidi. Heidi, you watch her? H E D Y. Oh, Hetty. I don't know. Hetty. Hi, Hetty. Makes me think of like Hetty Lamar. Am I saying your name right, Hetty? So you guys get a special shout out. Um, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Uh, this is all check about consistency. Podcast too. Yes. Check out the Death Positive podcast. I swear. I promise. Episode two, Episode two will be up soon. Um, so yes. Uh, join us here next week, Melissa. Worth the wait. Yeah, let's do this again next Saturday. I'll get some wine coolers. Cool. We'll have a great time. In the meantime, if you guys will get in the comments or DM us with your questions of what you really want to know, the dirt. So yes. we will soil ourselves and tell you what the dirt is. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is, I definitely think that um, I would like this to be a very casual sort of talk show. And for those of you watching, um, I'm going to have a link. There's a link in my link tree bio. And Melissa, will you put it up in your link tree that will basically allow you to call in. Um, so we're using Riverside FM and that gives you a call in. Um, it'll put you in the lobby. So don't worry, it's not going to just like rush you right into the show. We'll like let you in. Um, and I think it'd be really fun to experiment because for me, this is all about making friends. And um, I... I know what I know and I don't know what I don't know and everything that I learn and most of my inspiration comes from talking to other people. I uh, really need other people to thrive and succeed. So I'm um, super excited. So with that, uh, don't forget, like, subscribe, all those things that you see like little boy Instagrammers when they're always like, yo, like, subscribe, hit us up. Yeah, do that for us too, because we're nice. All right. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. We're nice. Also, I just want to be very clear that this is coffee and this is sparkling water. I don't want people to think I'm like two-fisting because honestly. I... Marijuana um, because it's legal and it's in the morning or it's after. I don't know. I don't care. I'm on. Uh, I'm, I'm, all ca I'm all caffeine today. So, um, all right. Now that we've told everybody that we are. Supposed to Wait, am I supposed to say this is flavored air? No, I don't know. We'll, we'll just. We'll wait to see when we whatever. get in trouble for whatever. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, I think that we've taken online potty breaks. We've done drugs and alcohol. Um, oh, no, it's not a drug if it's legal. <sighs> it's right, right. All right. But let's. You, we made it worth their while, did we not? That's right. Let's not give the courts any other ammunition against us. Give let's them sign some off music. Quick. Oh, yeah. I, I have music for us, but I haven't put it on here yet. So, um, 
let's let's see what transition transition five is hold on oh okay transition five is let's do um riverside tune okay our exit music i feel like people are just gonna okay <sighs> come on music <laughs> There it goes. Come here, come here, come here. Come on, baby. Come here. 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 Come here.